Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Legal Ease. Legal Ease is my weekly show where I deal with legal issues and practical issues that people have to deal with every day that have to do with the law. And um, today we're going to talk a little bit about how and what to do if you've been involved in a motor vehicle accident and you need to file a claim with your insurance company. So if you uh, like what you hear today, please feel free to like, share, or comment below. And if you like my videos, please go visit my YouTube page, Legalese. And I've got some really good informational stuff on, uh, on that website, and it's uh, really definitely worth taking a look at. But today we're going to talk a little bit about filing a claim with an auto insurance carrier when you've been involved in an accident. So the accident happens, unfortunately. You didn't want it to happen. You've planned for it not to happen. You've hoped it wouldn't happen. But like so many things in life, uh, they happen. Um, and unfortunately, statistically speaking, most people are going to be involved in motor vehicle accidents at some point in their life or be close to somebody who is. And so there are a few things you should know uh, if this were to happen to you. Now, I'm not talking about the things we've talked about in prior videos. So after this accident happens, you've you've um, uh, taken pictures of your vehicles, hopefully, taken pictures of the scene safely. You have uh, spoken to the police who have arrived at the scene. You have been checked out by EMS. You've gone to the ER if necessary to seek appropriate treatment. Uh, these are all the things that you should be doing if you've been involved in an accident and things that I've talked about in the past. Now, all of that is done. So now what? Well, now you have to deal with the insurance companies that are involved in the case. So what is an automobile insurance company anyway? Well, they're not a cute little gecko like you see on television who talks with an Australian or British accent. We're really not sure which one it is, but the gecko is Geico's uh, symbol. It's not Flo, the eccentric lady with the pricing gun. Um, while they are, uh, are endearing and adorable uh, symbols that uh, the insurance companies have sort of substituted in the eyes of the public for what they really are, which are uh, huge, uh, powerful corporations that are in the business of making money. Uh, that's what an insurance company is, uh, and their concerns have to deal with making money, uh, saving money, and they save money by not paying money. So insurance companies have an interest in protecting their money, uh, protecting their insureds, and uh, that's how they do business. So uh, insurance companies definitely um, have an agenda. Uh, they are looking to protect the uh, interest of their insureds, yet at the same time have to act in their insureds' best interest. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, an insurance company has an obligation to investigate a claim before making any payment on it. And this becomes very, very interesting because these are big, powerful corporations, but one of these big, powerful corporations works for you and the other one works for the other driver. So after an accident happens, you're going to be contacted probably by the other driver's insurance company uh, so that they can speak with you. In fact, this uh, happens sometimes to such an extreme that you may be at the scene of the accident and an SUV uh, from the insurance company for the other driver may arrive at the scene to uh, uh, take a look around, to investigate the claim. And they may ask if they, you want to take a check to resolve everything right then and there. I, I can only advise people not to ever accept the settlement offered for anything until you've consulted with an attorney such as myself, uh, a professional who deals with uh, motor vehicle accidents uh, on a daily basis and understands the ins and the outs and the do's and the don'ts. But the insurance companies will show up at the scene. Hopefully they'll get you unawares. They will offer you some money and a check and you may take it. And if you take it and you sign a release, you're done. That means that any additional medicals that you may need as a result uh, to be paid for that aren't covered by your own no fault benefits are not going to be covered by the other driver's insurance company. They've already paid you what they've paid you. So it's very, very important how you handle contact with insurance companies after an accident happens. So what kind of contact are you required to have with the other driver's insurance company after an accident? 
Well, the answer to that is zero, none. You have no obligation to have any contact with the other driver's insurance company whatsoever. And you certainly should not until you've consulted with an attorney and learned what the best course of action is. You have no contract and no policy with the other driver, the at-fault driver's insurance policy. They're just calling up so that they can gather information so that they can put themselves in the best position to investigate your claim and possibly even put you in a lesser position to bring a claim later on based upon information they may get out of you. So they may call you up. They may want to talk to you. They may ask to take a statement. They may ask for a recorded statement. Uh, they are not entitled to any of this. In fact, uh, not at all. The other driver's insurance company has no right to have you do any of this at this point in time. Uh, so if you get a phone call from the other driver's insurance company, tell them that I'm consulting with an attorney and we will be in touch. Now, that is how you can deal with the other driver's uh, insurance company. Now, there's going to come a time when contact is going to be made with them because you may want to bring a claim for bodily injury liability against them, against their driver's policy. And when that time comes, your attorney will have sent in letters of representation and he will be handling the contact. There are times when the issue of getting your car fixed will allow communication between the other driver's insurance adjuster handling the property damage and yourself if your lawyer deems it appropriate. However, in any event, do not discuss your physical condition or your well-being or anything that you're feeling as a result of the accident or any medical treatment you've received with the property damage adjuster for the other insurance company. They shouldn't be asking you about those questions anyway. That's the other side, the other driver's company. But what about your own insurance company? What about your gecko or your flow or your good neighbor? Well, it's a little different when you have an insurance policy with an insurance carrier. Uh, in this particular case, suppose it's State Farm. Uh, you have an obligation under your insurance contract, under your policy with your own insurance company to cooperate in their reasonable investigation of your claim. Now, understand something. Just because this insurance company is your insurance company doesn't mean that they have any less interest in pursuing their own interests than they would if they were the other drivers. The difference is they are obliged to act in good faith toward their insured you and not to act in bad faith. So they have to do what is right by their insureds. They have to do what is ethical or they can have all kinds of problems. So you call your insurance company to report the accident or you call an attorney and have the attorney do it for you. That's usually what I recommend. And then if the insurance company wants to take your recorded statement later on, you can do that in the presence of your attorney who will be listening to all the questions and will make sure that no funny business goes on. Oh, I see I've got a visitor. Kara, how are you doing? It's been a long time. We miss you here. I uh, hope you're doing well. Um, sorry, back to what I'm talking about. So um, when you're dealing with your own insurance company, your insurance policy is going to have conditions in it. And one of those conditions is going to require that you report an accident within a certain period of time. Now, some policies ask that you report the accident as soon as possible. Some say within a reasonable amount of time. In any event, you probably want to have your attorney report the accident, or even if you report the accident um, to the insurance company, probably fairly quickly. And there's a reason for that. So you call your insurance company up. You say, I've been involved in an accident. And they say to you, I would like to take your statement and I'd like to take it recorded. The best reply to your insurance company then is I'd be willing to give a recorded statement only if a lawyer is present. So let me consult with my attorney and he will contact you and he will arrange a time when it's mutually uh, agreeable and we can do it all together. And that is what I recommend. However, if you take it upon yourself to report the accident or if this were to happen before you have contact with a lawyer, speak to the adjuster, give a brief but succinct recitation of the facts of how the accident happened, be very, very clear, and just provide that amount of information that is necessary to get the claim started. Uh, but I would definitely resist any recording being done until you can have the attorney uh, with you and be present and helping you. 
Um, so what kind of claims are you going to be uh, bringing or wanting to bring uh, with regard to your own insurance policy? Well, the first one, most importantly, is going to be your PIP claim. So when you speak to this adjuster, they should be opening up a no-fault injury claim for you, a PIP claim, so that your medical providers can be reimbursed by your PIP benefits. Because remember, PIP is the first line of reimbursement. It pays at 80% of your reasonable, related, and medically necessary medical bills stemming from an accident. So PIP is super important. Uh, you want to make sure that you comply with your insurance policy uh, with regard to your PIP benefits. You don't want to lose them. You want to make sure that you report for treatment within 14 days of the accident so you don't lose them. Uh, going to the emergency room or an urgent care facility, uh, the day of the accident counts as the first examination uh, and will get you within the 14-day limit. However, um, you know as long as you do it within 14 days, your uh, insurance, your PIP benefits will be secure, uh, although it is advisable to do it sooner rather than later because you don't want to wait too long for that reason, but also you don't want to wait so long that it prejudices your insurance company's ability to gather information because that could potentially become a basis to avoid coverage under your insurance policy. So with regard to the particular kinds of claims you bring with your insurance companies, suppose you are bringing a claim against the other driver for their bodily injury liability and for being at fault in the accident and harming you. So if they have an insurance policy in place that affords them bodily injury liability coverage or not, and you're going to sue that driver, in the state of Florida, you have four years. That is the statute of limitations. And, and what is a statute of limitations? A statute is a law that is written, that's in the statute books, the law books, that establishes an amount of time that you have to file a claim, meaning to file a lawsuit in court, or be forever barred from ever doing so in the future. So in Florida, with regard to personal injury claims against other drivers and other tortfeasors, it is a four-year statute of limitations. Now, if you are going to bring an uninsured motorist claim against your own insurance company, then you have five years to bring that claim. If you're going to bring a no-fault claim or a claim against your own insurance company for failing to pay no-fault benefits or your, PIP, or your PIP claim, or it could be done through your doctors too if they're pursuing their medical bills and you've assigned your benefits to them, then they can do it. But either way, you have five years, five, to bring a PIP claim or a UM claim against your insurance company. Although the BI claims and the UM claims usually sort of flow together, and particularly if you file a lawsuit, you generally include both defendants, the other driver, as well as your own insurance company in the lawsuit if you're going to pursue a lawsuit for those benefits. Um, so that's basically what you're doing when you're filing a claim against an insurance company. Now, the insurance company may decide to take your recorded statement at a later time, at which time you arrange it with your attorney. You uh, are on a conference call, probably a three-way call, or you're with your attorney at the time, and you're being asked questions, and you're answering those questions truthfully to the best of your knowledge, so you don't commit fraud, which, of course, insurance fraud is a third-degree felony in the state of Florida, and you don't want to do that. And if you are being truthful and your uh, attorney is instructing you properly, there should be no reason for anything like that to go on in the first place. Um, now, the reason I brought that up today was because I had a lot of questions about that. You know, I've done some shows in the past about what to do if you've been involved in an accident, but never really got into detail of the claims uh, initially, uh, the initialization of the claims process. But it really starts off with reporting the claim to the insurance company. And one of the reasons you want to consider uh, having an attorney do that for you is because the adjuster does not have access to you. The adjuster can't get information out of you that could put you at a disadvantage. Your lawyer knows uh, what to say to the adjuster uh, and, and understands when during a recorded statement a question may be asked that may be a little bit beyond the scope of what is necessary or maybe just unreasonable for the purpose of investigating and may only be to secure some kind of tactical advantage against you in the future. But anyway, um, that's pretty much it. That's the uh, the initialization of the claims process uh, with insurance companies, what you should avoid, particularly avoid the SUVs like the progressive uh, Ford Explorer or the Ford Escape that shows up at the scene and they want to issue you a check. You want to avoid that at all costs. Certainly make it a point 
to pick up your phone and call an attorney. Uh, call the law offices of Krista Barry. That's my firm. And I can help you if you've been involved in an accident or you or somebody that you care about has been involved in an accident. And I can answer all of these questions. And I advise you to do it before you have contact with the insurance companies. And remember, if the other driver's company calls you up and they want to talk to you, say, I will speak with my attorney and we will determine when contact is appropriate. But anyway, folks, that's all for this evening. Thank you for tuning in. And remember, if you liked what you heard, please like, share, or comment below. I appreciate your comments and your feedback. Uh, it's all really helpful to me. And I hope you all have a wonderful week and be safe out there. Thank you.